when we have a scene to draw with a lot of detail, even a massive detail, it can feel very overwhelming. Because the challenge is how drawing with line, and particularly drawing with ink, do I represent all of this detail and not have my drawing end up looking a tangled mess of just so much line all over the place that it's really hard to tell what's what. But if I leave out too much of the detail, I'm not going to capture the essence of the scene itself, which is this tangle of undergrowth. I think the first thing we need to do is to actually understand what our scene is, what we're looking at, because it's much more difficult to draw a scene with visual meaning if we actually haven't understood that meaning looking at our reference or our reference photo. And what I like to do is to understand the scene in a series of planes that go backwards, a bit like stage sets on a scene where we might have three or four or five layers of scenery that move back further from the front of the stage. So for here, in my very closest plane to the observer, we have basically this tuft of grass and this shadow behind it. This is the foreground. These parts are much closer. And so I'll be considering those as an area to be drawn in more detail than other areas. And then behind this, we now have a, an area that involves this branch here coming over the front. But then we have this bush here, and we have a tree here coming up that actually sits in front of this branch. And it is important when we have scenes such as this to work out what's in front of what, to have that clearly in our mind. And then there's, a, there's another small gum tree here, I think uh, basically behind this tree. And then further back, we have this tree and we have these shrubs and we have this tree at the side. And beyond that, we have what look as if they're wattle trees or a row of um, shrubby wattles. And then behind that, we basically have what is a tangle of trees as we have gum trees further back, basically merging into a into more a tonal value of gray green than anything else. And I find it helpful to adapt my pen and my line work and my approach to which plane the part of the scene I'm drawing sits in. And I've talked about the value in another video of doing a preparatory sketch, which is not a thumbnail sketch. It's not working out composition or anything such as that. So it's a way of trialing how in my mind I think I'm going to work out how I'm going to draw certain elements, what line work, what marks, what hatching, what pens I'm going to use. So for this scene, I did that and I took about five minutes to do it. And I did that after I had considered what's closest, what's next further back, what's next further back. Because I wanted to see how I could create these effects. And this is my five minute preparatory trialing of ideas. Because to represent this using a pen, I've got basically two things that I can play with and manipulate. The first is I've got my line. I've got line thickness and I've got the marks I make on the paper, how long they are, how short they are, what shape they are, are they straight, are they curved, how close do I put them together. And so when I did this preparatory sketching, I used a range of thicknesses with the thicker pens at the front and the finer pens at the back using a 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. Trying to get a sense for my line work, for the way I was going to draw the edges and do the hatching. The other thing I have to use to create my scene and to maintain visual order in it is tonal value. And while I'm not using tone in the sense of ink washes or ink marker in this, I still have the ability to create tonal values from white to black. The white, of course, is already in the paper. The black comes when I do hatching that's so close together that it actually creates pretty much a flat black surface. And I have every possible variation of gray in between according to how much hatching I want to do and how I place my lines. And so in a scene such as this, we, in places we have very strong tonal bands. We have some at the front here. We have a band behind this grass, which both helps through negative space to 
create the form that we see and also gives some separation to what's behind it. And then we have a lighter section that's in sunlight and behind that we have this group of wattles, the fronts of which are in shadow. And then behind that we basically have a merging of shade and local colour in a drab grey mid-tone that represents gum trees where we can't distinguish one from the other. So I want to use these strong tonal areas and particularly these bands to create a sense of separation that we're moving back through our scene because that will help the eye to focus on smaller sections, get a sense of meaning and then move deeper into our scene. And yet this scene is a tangle and I don't want to lose the sense that it's an overgrown jungly tangle. So I, I don't want to simplify it so much that it looks like it's in someone's front yard. So let me talk you through how I put this into practice now as I draw it. So I start yet again by apologising that I didn't have the video turned on when I started drawing but fortunately I, I stopped just to see how it looked through the camera and realised I hadn't turned it on. So it really was maybe five minutes worth of drawing at most. I start with this foreground tuft of grass. It's always I think best to start with the foreground unless there's a compelling reason not to. And I'm wanting to establish some of these darker tonal areas that I've talked about right up front because that then will help me get a sense of proportion for values across the whole drawing as I progress. I'm also very aware that a lot of this tuft of grass will be shown through negative space. But I'm using my 0.5 millimeter pen and so I'm establishing just those few things beyond the tuft of grass that are drawn with this pen and now this branch that comes across from the tree on the extreme right hand side. Although we can see part of the trunk in the reference, I'm not actually going to draw it in this drawing. I think it's going to look a little more visually dramatic to just come across without any trunk at all. And now I've switched to a 0 0.3 and I'm doing this uh, small tree, baby tree, that sits in the, the front of the mid-ground or the rear of the foreground, whichever way you want to think about it. And the top of it is in sunlight but a lot of it is in shade. Because it is quite close we do get a sense of leaf definition that we don't get in a lot of other parts of this scene. So this is where we take advantage of that and the fact that in, in quite dark shadow it's basically a black silhouette form to draw a little more detail and therefore give the eye something to focus on more clearly as, as being, oh that's definitely a tree and it's kind of closer because we can see some of the leaves. I just want to make sure though that I still maintain some variability in the shading on the leaves because the entire tree is not in shadow. And I can come up against the top where bits are more in light by using some tonal contrast further behind. So now I've got this band of, of dark tone that goes across the mid uh, section of the drawing. It also defines some of the grass that's beneath it. And so I try and make sure I preserve where I want some white to stand out in contrast. And then there's another couple of very small trees in the um, further back in the mid ground and some very small things next to it as well. And look, this is the sort of scene where I'm not going to start to agonise over being too exact to the scene. I mean, I want to roughly follow what's in it because I've chosen it to draw because I think it has a nice balance of, of shapes, of objects, of closeness, of furthest, of, of tonal values. And I, you know, I like the composition, but equally, it's not quite like drawing the Louvre in perspective where you really have to work hard at getting everything in the right place. I want to put more concentration into creating a feel through my choices with line work and tonal value and the things we've talked about already. And so here I am just trying to kind of work out where I'm going to put things and I think it's best to try and progress the whole drawing to some degree. So I haven't actually finished the parts that I'm moving on from, switching now to a 0 0.2. 
but I want to get something down so that I can be working over the whole the whole area. So I've just basically outlined that that mid ground tree at the extreme left, and now I'm looking at uh, just putting some of the darker tonal values in now at the back of the mid ground. It's probably how I'm thinking of this space. Notice how with some of these shapes, such as these trees that go down, I maintain a very slight line of white between the edge of the tree and the shadow that I put in next to it, because it just lets the eye read everything that much more easily. And while I want to have white bands, in a sense, going across, as we talked earlier, I don't want them to be totally white. Now I've switched now to a um, I think I went back to the point 0.3. I didn't quite see what, yeah, I switched back to a point 0.3 because I this was a bit of a closer tree. So putting a bit of shadow onto these uh, two trees in the center, but as I was saying, being, being careful to maintain uh, a slight whiteness between them and the tonal values coming up behind them. Even though that's not really quite there in the reference, it's one of those uh, bits of poetic license that I think overall just helps us to read, to understand what's in our scene. So with my 0.2, I'm doing this tree on the left. Now, I've ummed an art about how to do this, and I decided to draw this one, which is a very light, It's a, as far as I can see, it's a silky oak, which is a very light, sparse type of um, pine tree. And so I didn't want to overdo the uh, effect of it. I decided it'll be uh, more defined by some tonal values behind it. So everything starts to become a little less well defined. So it's a bit harder to make choices. So now I'm uh, just again with the 0.2 millimeter pen, I'm defining what some of those bunches of pine needles will take the shape of. So now I've got my 0.1, so I'm considering some of the furthest details that I'm going to draw. It's in a scene like this that I miss my oil paints and colours that I did for 10 years before I began drawing, because putting the blue sky in at this point, basically punching it through the tree canopy as I used to think of it, was always such a wonderfully defining moment in a painting. And, and really made clear what was tree and what was sky. And I, I really do miss the ability to do that with uh, black and white work. It's a bit better with uh, tone, at least. But with line, it's a little more challenging. So this tangle of branches in the upper part of the drawing is also a bit more of a challenge because it isn't as well defined in the reference. It's a bit hard to work out what's what, and I don't want to overwork it, so therefore I, I do want to keep it a bit vague because the eye is always going to be drawn to the clearer, stronger detail and the clarity of the centre and the foreground. So in a sense, we don't need to work it too much in the upper part, but we still want to convey a sense of, of what's happening there. So doing a bit more work in this central section working on the negative space to define the tops of the grass, overworking some of the parts that I did earlier with a bit more darkness, and add in a few dots and dashes and bits and bobs to uh, some of the whiter spaces. So they're not quite so white. The challenge is not to go too far and to make them less white than we actually would like them. It's, it's knowing just where to stop that's that I think in the end we only get through practice. And by remembering to stop and have a look, it is so easy to fill in all the gaps with lines if we're not careful. And uh, this is, I think, a sort of scene where it's a prime risk. And if you draw this yourself, and I, I really hope you do, I'm using my 0.1 now, I really hope you do. Um, the reference photo will be available on my channel community page. Can I suggest that you work over the whole scene all at once and progress the whole scene at the same time. But stop and stand up and look from a little bit more of a distance than we get when we're actually drawing to work out what's happening. Now you can see I've put a lot of fine, lighter line work in the back there now. 
and I'm just working at how it's how I'm going to sort of bring a little more variation into it. About this time I think I look at it and think there's too many lines that are all too vertical so hopefully from memory you, you should be seeing me trying to add a little bit of uh, variety to the direction that these lines go. Notice that I took advantage of these this branch to do some hatching lines uh, in quite a contrasting direction to most of the hatching of the other parts and that helps it to stand out and just adds a, a, a touch of liveliness I think to the effect of the line work. So there's a bit more time where I, you'll see me just waving the pen where I'm working out what do I need to do, where, where does a bit more line need to go. And this is sped up uh, four times life so um, yeah I think it took me about 35 minutes to do in life. So again, did I go too far in filling in that white spot or not? I, I wasn't too sure about those bits that I just added. And now strengthening some of the darker tonal values in the front and further back. Getting pretty close to the end here. I'm really just looking for are there final adjustments? Does something need strengthening a tonal value that, that should be darker? Uh, a few little spots. Um, adjusting the edges a little bit, bringing the line work further out in one or two of the corners, um, strengthening some of the, the detail up the top there and working on that large tree that's in the background which was possibly a bit more challenging to work out the level of line work and tone with that. Adding some of those darker values for canopies behind this tree on the left hand side. I think I mentioned earlier I was going to do that and this is where we can overwork a drawing if we're not careful. I'm using the 0 0.1 still I, I notice at this point just on some of the distance work. Really adjusting tonal values rather than adding line for outline or form at this point. What do you think? Would you do much more work to it or would you have stopped sooner? <laughs> That's an advantage that can be taken after the drawing's done via video to go back and think, mm, I think I preferred it at this earlier stage. Well, hopefully not. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I hope you found this interesting. This sort of scene can be very challenging. It can be easy to get really caught up in a tangle of lines and in the end have something that's really quite hard to make out. So I hope you have a go drawing it. But look, whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.